My name is Heather Wilson, and I am the founder of Kennedy's Angel Gowns. Today, I have a very special guest meeting with us today to talk about her experience as the perinatal bereavement counselor, nurse, counselor and nurse, I should say, um, for the Sintera hospitals here in the Hampton Roads area. So welcome, Deborah, Deb Doherty. Oh, thank you. It's good to see you, Heather. It's Thanks good for inviting to me. You. Of course, we could not do this without you. You are such an, an intricate part. And a lot of the ladies we talked to, they mentioned you in their interviews. So oh. we're so happy to have you here. You made a lot of things possible for them that they didn't know could happen when going through such a tragic loss. So we thank you for being that voice and for standing beside us during the most difficult time in our lives. Thank you. Thank you. I feel the same way about you. Oh, thank you. So um, Deb and I met, um, it's crazy how we met in fact, because <laughs> we met before she had this position um, and both of us just had this burning desire to get cuddle cots here before we even knew each other. And um, when I was attempting to get the first cuddle cot here, I, I ran into a lot of bumps and just a lot of, um, a lot of holdups and so finally we were connected and um it's like she had heard about me and i had heard about her and we finally got connected and she's been such an intricate piece to how we were able to get the first cuddle cut here and then the next what seven to follow mm -hmm. so um we have our own little journey of um ordering from different countries to get <laughs> to get to get cuddle cots here and um, ceremonies to dedicate them and um, down to a bereavement room. So um, our relationship is special in that uh, we work together as a team um, only from different spectrums. And, and that's kind of what we want to talk about today is you have a, a completely different story than uh, the rest of the people that we've spoken to. And more specifically, you serve as a perinatal bereavement counselor, so uh, bereavement nurse. And so I want uh, to talk a little bit about that. And to start, I want to talk about um, when you learned about a cuddle cot and, and what you think it means to families that unfortunately have to use it. I actually, when I first started at the position that I have now, I started at Sentara in May of 2017, almost three years. Um, well, yeah, three years since May. So, um, <laughs> and um, there was um, a nurse had come to me and said, you know, we have a patient who wants to bring her baby home. And that was not something that um, I was aware that we could or could not do and I just felt like well I really want to get more information about this and so I went on Google and I found a website that talked about bringing baby home and then in this um, article it discussed the cuddle cot especially over in Europe and England how um, um, moms and dads were bringing their babies home and how this cuddle cot gave them the gift of time to be with their baby. Um, and so I started to research that more because we didn't have something like that in the hospital. Um, I was looking for a way that we could provide that for our patients. And it was, I think meant to be because it was right. It wasn't too much longer after um, I started to do um, that research, then we actually had a patient who um, did her own research and brought one with her. She brought, borrowed one from another um, nonprofit organization. So that just really showed me how important it was that we have one at the hospital for our patients who wanted to use them. And for our patients who weren't aware of them, when they do become aware of them, they're very grateful to have them. Yeah, definitely. They're definitely vital for anyone going through a loss. Um, we're currently, Kennedy's Angel Gowns, been really focused and bringing up that topic of, of being brave through your grief. And day to day, you get to see a lot of moms being brave through their grief. Can you share, without breaking confidentiality, <laughs> um, a story where you've seen that that's inspired you? I've had 
several different patients um, that come to mind, especially the mom who is carrying a baby who knows that the baby's not going to make it. Um, so this gives her time to kind of plan, um, get more information and plan what she wants to do um, when her baby's born, knowing that she only has a very short amount of time to be with her baby. And it's not well known that this happens. It's kind of a secret. Nobody talks about baby loss. Nobody talks about that you can lose a baby after 12 weeks of pregnancy. You get to 12 weeks and you think, oh, I'm good. Yeah. And, and that's not the case. Um, it happens more often than people realize. And so I think the public doesn't really understand that it's part of our biological needs as parents to um, socialize our babies and to protect our babies and to care for our babies and death does not sever that. And so it's so important for our families that have delivered um, a baby that has passed away um, or passes away shortly after birth, how important it is to have that time with their baby. And so to kind of get back to the question that you asked, so the moms who are carrying their baby knowing that their baby's not going, they're not going to be able to bring their baby home. I think that um, it's courageous. It is very courageous. Yeah, it's kind of hard to articulate, but I, I have, um, yeah, a very special place in my heart for them. Yeah. And I'm sure these families and their stories stick with you. Absolutely. And, yeah. Yeah. So we're in a very strange time right now. It's um, COVID-19 is happening. How has that changed the processes and, and how you are meeting the needs of these patients right now? As, as far as COVID-19 um, in the hospital, when I'm in the hospital, when I'm in the facility, um, I still visit the patients. I go to their rooms. I have a mask on. Um, oh, and you know what? Now that you say that, I can't hug. I know. So... And, you know, Dimitri taught me how important it is to hug the guys, too. And so to sit there and hear their story and just, I feel like I have such a connection with them. But then to end it, goodbye, it's yeah, very awkward. It's like, with so a mask have, on at that. Have, yes, yes. Of so the facial expression, just, um, it's so awkward right now not being able to, um, to do that for me. Um, and I haven't really met a patient who hasn't wanted a hug. So I think it's really important to kind of end. Um, it just helps with that connection. That's yeah. how I show them that I, you know, yeah, care for them. Definitely. You know? mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, so the, I guess with Centera hospitals right now, are they allowing dad in the room to support mom through the delivery process right now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Is it just dad? Just it's, one it's, person? It's one person. So we call him dad support or support person. person. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, that has been a challenge um, for some patients because, you know, um, their support person is dad, but then so is like maybe their best friend or their mother um, yeah. or the grandparents not being able to come in and see the baby. That's been, that's been hard. Mm -hmm. um, and we do want, you know, in special circumstances, you know, end of life kind of situations, we do the best that we can to, um, to provide, um, I guess, that opportunity for the grandparents to see the baby or um, it's just, it's really, it's, it's tough. It's tough times as far as only letting that one support person in and um, who that's gonna be. Yeah. So is everyone pretty much just getting um, like a test as far as like a fever to check for symptoms before they enter the hospital, including moms in labor? Yes. Okay. Um, and that's been kind of, you know, it's evolving like everything else. If you watch the news, kind of yeah. how that kind of evolved, that's been evolving in the hospital too. Yeah. And um, so right now, um, we only have that, there's no visitors unless um, it's end of life for a patient in another area of the hospital or for the, the mom um, who's having um, 
a baby. Um, yeah. And we do check the temps. We ask them the questions. Have you been ill? Have you been around anyone who's had COVID-19? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that's kind of what we do. And we ask the patient and um, the significant other or the support person to wear a mask, even in the room. And the nurses wear masks, you know, masks yeah. too. Um, it's just that whole, we don't know. Someone can be asymptomatic and carry it. Right. And so that's Scary. why the mask is kind of important. Um, by the nurses wearing a mask, they're protecting the patient and the patient's protecting the nurse, kind of. Yeah. By both wearing them. What do cuddle cots and caring cradles mean to you as far as you're the person that um, ensures that patients that need them are, you're the one that, that sometimes uh, wheels it in or, or assists your nursing staff on getting those patients whatever they need. We're trying to, of course, raise donations to get them in every hospital. Why would you say that these devices are so vital in your own words? Um, just kind of when you're explaining the cuddle cots and, and bringing it into the room, you know, when we finally were able to start providing the cuddle cots that we have in the hospitals now, the nurses, it was like we gave the nurses a tool to give their patients what they've been wanting to give them all along. Um, our, our nurses are so good about collecting those memory items, um, pictures and footprints and um, this cuddle cot kind of um, takes that one step further by giving them um, the opportunity to give their patient more time with the baby. And yeah. um, so there's, I just, they're just so grateful that we have something like that, that, um, um, that we can provide for our patients. But I know I keep saying it, and, but <laughs> it, it is, it's a gift of time because when the time, baby, it, yeah. that's it, that's all they have. And mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, the baby's, you know, not always in it. Mom wants to hold the baby or dad wants to hold the baby or whoever's with mom. Um, but then the baby can be in the cuddle cot when mom's resting. Um, and the cuddle cot and the caring cradle, it looks like a cradle. So it makes things seem a little more. It does. Yeah. Typical. Yeah. Like if you went in, you know, um, yeah. So. And why should someone donate towards cuddle cots and caring cradles? Um, I know that people, um, they want to be able to help these families. Um, so you have uh, an aunt, a cousin, a loved one, someone that um, you hear about that has lost their baby and you wanna help them, you wanna fix it and you can't. Mm -hmm. Because the only thing that's gonna make it better is to bring their baby back and that we can't do that. But mm -hmm. if we can help in some ways by donating money for a cuddle cot um, so that families who do experience this, um, we can just make such a hard time a little bit easier. That's yeah. why I think it's important because we can't really do that much. Maybe bring over a meal or there's just yeah. not that much we can do to make them feel better. But I think this is such an amazing tool to give that family that um, priceless gift of time. And every, you know, it doesn't have to be, it can be a little bit, it can, you know, whatever someone wants mm -hmm. to give in honor of that baby that maybe just passed away. So it wouldn't be for that baby, but maybe somebody else's. And right. honoring that baby, which can yeah. help that baby live on. Yes. Like Kennedy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> has anyone ever called you brave as a nurse, as a mother, as a counselor, as, as someone who's there? Has, it, has anyone ever referred you, to you as brave? Yes. Um, my own experience with loss, um, and, and people have said that to me, although inside I didn't feel that way. But I guess um, some, especially in the very beginning when it's so hard and it's so painful and so raw, I guess getting out of bed is brave. Because, it is brave. You know, you're just so, um, you're just not the same person that you used to be and that's just such a scary time. And, and I, you know, every parent's worst nightmare is losing their child and then mm -hmm. we've experienced that and we've got to go on with living without our child so um one day at a time and getting through that um and taking that and, and trying to create something positive out of it so that you can help other families i think is very brave does your experience with loss 
help you to help these patients? And I know yours isn't exactly the same, but does it? For, for me, when people ask me what I do, um, I feel like I get almost the same response every time. Ooh, that must be really hard. Mm -hmm. um, and and for me, it's almost it's it's um it's it, it's hard for me to articulate. It's mm -hmm. um it's like I I've been a labor and delivery nurse before this position, and to me, I felt like it was such an honor to be part of that experience. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, you only have so many babies and to be able to be a part of that person's journey is such an honor. Well, I feel that here too. Um, mm -hmm. It's something that um, if there's anything that I can do to make that um, patient's experience um, just a little better, then I feel like um, I've done something meaningful and that's um, that's why I'm doing it. It, it. it does make me feel closer to my son, Tommy. Um, I know that before I walk in the door, I say a prayer and I ask, you know, that God just give me the words that he wants me to say to the patient um, so that it's meaningful to the patient. And then I just kind of let him do. Yeah. Work. Yeah. And I know you don't, you don't often share your story um, with the patients and that's. Um, right. Cause it's about them. I don't want it to about be. Them. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Um, but I'll say um, when you shared your story with me, it, um, it made so much more sense as to why you are so amazing at what you do. It really did because you do get it on a, a different level. And I know we often say it's not, this, but it's, you do understand. And I do, I do feel that connection with you. Um, whenever I see you, I do feel that connection. And I do think you're definitely one of the most bravest people that I've ever met because you do this every day. Every day you sit bedside and um, that could re-trigger your trauma. That could um, lead to so many things. So I just, I honor your bravery and wow. I, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful that these patients have you to sit beside them and help them through this difficult time. You're good at what you do, what you do and it shows because um, when you get a chance to sit down and hear all the, the messages that these ladies said about you, you'll understand that when they think of the memories of the most tragic time in their lives, they think of you as a person who helped guide them through it. So oh. thank you for all your work. Thank you. I feel like I, thank you for saying that, because I feel like I there's more I could do or I wish I could do more. So um, mm -hmm. thank you for that. Yeah. No, it's no problem at all. I feel the same way about you. I think it's mutual because I just don't know how we would do what we do at the hospital without you. Um, it's a partnership. I it? know, but it's, I mean, it's not just the cuddle pet. It's, it's the butterfly room, which is right next door to my office. And just oh. <laughs> the nurses are so proud that we can provide that. They bring, you know, if someone's coming in for an interview, they show them the butterfly room. It's just all part of it. It's, it's so, I can't believe that, ha like, I don't know if you remember that day we had sat down for lunch yes. and we were like talking about it and we were right next to like a garden. We were in the cafeteria, but it had a, a pretty garden and we were talking about it. And it was just one of those things that I think you and I were like, one day this will happen. And it happened, Deb. I know. We have a yeah. butterfly room. This, the room is, is, it's so amazing. I still sit in shock and disbelief that it happened that quickly. Yeah. It's so nice that we can provide that for our families. And then our nurses use it too. If we don't yeah. have a family, they can go in there and kind of put their feet up for a minute, you know, take five. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's such a beautiful room. But not only that, the, the butterfly room and um, the cuddle cots that you've put into all the different hospitals, but then um, being able to give the patients the cards that you provide us, knowing that um, when they leave, that you might be able to, um, if they contact you, a support group in their area or something, mm -hmm. you know, it's like such a resource um, because you have been in their shoes and yeah. get it. And um, yeah. so you do a lot for the yeah. community. Yeah. Thank you. With the help of you <laughs> <laughs> and your team, your team yeah. is amazing. Um, yeah. And I, I, I also thank you for just um, your team coming to every event that we have um, to help us raise awareness, even putting it in the nurse's office where they can see 
our events and attend. And I, I can't tell you enough or thank you enough. I often get moms that say, I can't believe my nurse is here, or I just saw Deb, I didn't know she could. It means so much because um, they do remember you. It's not just this short stay. Um, you don't know what they'll remember because you know, oftentimes we are out of it and in and out of shock and grief, but they do remember the care that you, you gave them, provided for them and their families. And so that's, that's very important. And well, your events are a lot of fun too. They are fun. You can't see it. The dress I was going to wear this last one's right there. I, I know. Know. <laughs> I know. For August. August and, for sure. And you're, you're still going to wear it. We're still going to. We're going to yeah. do it. We're going to have it's all um, over. Yeah. And it's going to be bigger and better. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward to it. So they're a lot of fun. The fundraisers mm -hmm. are great. And yeah. those are. And um, Deb had mentioned the butterfly room. Um, so the butterfly room is a room that uh, Deb and I dreamed about for years. And uh, it was it's a room that patients can go to and spend time with their baby. And um, families can go into that room. And there's, of course, a cuddle cot or a care and cradle inside of that room. It's got beautiful um, open windows and natural lighting yeah. butterflies and everywhere the dress is that you created um yes. some and on the yes. walls some there. of the dresses are in there and you can actually um get more information about the butterfly room on our website um please subscribe to our website too to uh get updates on everything we have going on we we try to do our best to support this community and um support all causes that provide support to this to bereaved moms and dads yeah. and families so anyone who's had a loved one that's experienced this and you don't know what to do for that family you can donate to your organization because yes. the organization helps so many families it really so does that you can do you can't fix their situation or make it better right now but you can do that and be a support mm -hmm. <laughs> thank well, you i much. thank you yes yeah. thank you i um we miss you, and I know I thought about it two weeks ago when we were supposed to be having an, the angel ball and be all, you know, dressed up and having a good time. I thought about all of you, and um, I'm thinking about you during these these harsh times. And know that um, if you need anything um, from us to support these families, please reach out to us. And of course, we'll always stay in touch. We're always connected by these things that we built in this community. And, you made um, my mask too, remember? Yes, you made mask and your, your mask. elephant. I wear it every day. Yeah. Oh, Thank that's you. awesome. Of course. <laughs> During a pandemic, you take care of my needs. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, thank yes. you. So um, we will see each other soon when this is over. And um, we'll keep doing what we do yeah. and keep supporting families. So Thank from you. all of us at Kennedy's Angel Gowns, Deb, you are a rock star. You are brave, and we love you. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for everything. Thank Bye. you. You take care. <laughs>
you know, in doing our research, we discovered that the team that he had was great, that um, his surgeon had never lost anyone. It was going to be right at CHKD. And, um, you know, these kids went home in four days after the repair of their heart. And so on the day of the surgery, it never occurred to us that we would be, you know, going home without him. And um, I can still remember that day um, like it were yesterday and it was over 15 years ago. Um, to to experience your um, your worst fear realized is um, something that's it's, uh, very hard to, to describe to articulate um, but it's something that I, I still um, feel very strongly it's not as intense as it was then but I remember that feeling it's kind of like if yeah. you've had a child and you know it's painful but then when you start fearing start feeling the contractions it's like oh my gosh I forgot oh, how much right. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same like um and I remember feeling like I just wanted to be with him. Not because I wanted to do anything. Yeah, yeah. But I just really not, Yes, and that and I didn't realize it then. I know it now that I've done um some, you know, reading on that. It's because of that biological need to care for mm -hmm. I just remember that feeling, just wanting to be with him because um, I missed him so much. And um, on the day that we had to, to bury, I still nursing him. He was only a year old when he passed away. And um, I remember when we were burying him, um, my milk let down. Um, and that wasn't, I wasn't prepared for, for that either. It was like, you know, to have to bury So um, it's, it changed who I was, it changed my life, and um, I, I had to take something that was so devastating and um, give it some meaning because I, I didn't want it to be, um, you know, his short little life. Um, I didn't want it to be in vain. I wanted people to still remember him. So what I do is my way of still being close to him um, until we get to be together. You know? again soon so. and you do it well yeah. and um it is it's so meaningful and it's so passionate and it makes so much sense why yeah. you understand you can still finish my sentences it's not just another nurse it's a nurse who's experienced the same hurt and pain that I have yeah and I know that I yeah so if I can do anything to help with that yeah. And it's, I feel like um, I'm not articulate at all. <laughs> okay. It's so hard to express it. Like, yeah, it's it's something that it, unless you've been through it, you just, it's, and that's what's kind of nice being with someone who's been through it because you don't have to explain it. Yep. I can articulate it, but knowing that I can be with someone who just holds me and creates that space for me and I don't have to explain why I feel the way I do and they know, they get it. Even the way um, the way you hug me, I can feel it. Like yeah. you know the type of hug I need because yeah, that's why it's so hard not to hug right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so personal question: mm -hmm. When you are in the moment, you're in the zone, and you're with a patient, and they're tearful, and it triggers something into you. In you, do you ever cry with your patients? Oh yeah. I do, um, but it's it um, because I, I I don't want to hold anything back. I feel like I'm being authentic and that I'm creating a space by uh, with them for them by sharing what I'm feeling. You know, if I were to not do that, that would put a wall up. I think. Yeah. Um, and. Um, I know you had said something earlier, but I, I, I feel it's really important not to go in and, and share Tommy because it's about them. It's not about me. Um, but I have been asked a couple of times, well, why do you do what you do? Um, you know, or has do you happened? share then? Yeah, I do. And yeah. or has, this, has this happened to you? Because people want to have mm -hmm. that connection. They want to know if I understand they, what they're feeling. Oh, 
yeah. because you feel so isolated when some when you lose a child you feel so isolated being in this club and when someone else does it's it's a, an instant connection you could not know them from a hole in the wall but that second that you know they've experienced it it's it's something magical about that and it's it's the connectivity of knowing someone's pain yeah. and um i so sometimes i do get lucky enough to um be the person that goes um into the into the room to deliver the gowns um which is i always think of it as very special um because we can't obviously you can't call me and say hey come up here there's a family who needs you because you can't release confidential information but what you do do is you give them those cards um, yes. with my information on it and they reach out to me and they 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 do ask can can you come here and when i do um i don't always like you say share right away but when they do ask and they find out it's just it, it brings it to a different level it really does so um i can i can definitely relate to that to um not wanting to overshare but if they do ask um it, it does it does help them to know someone's there and not feel so isolated and lonely i like what you said instant connection that's perfect yeah that's kind of what mm -hmm. it, yeah mm -hmm. and you don't feel so isolated yeah um because you do you feel like mm -hmm. nobody understands where you are so alone like this this letter of um i don't know sometimes i do feel like people are kind of weird around me because of that because they know i've been through that and they don't know what to say um in relation to it but it's crazy because then i can pick up the phone and call someone who has been through it and it's like instantly they get it so i i do i'm glad we're surrounded and we're able to through our children get this word out break silence and and, and talk about um, something that's a hush topic that we don't talk about right yeah we do need to talk about it more. I thank you so much for sharing. And I know that's not an easy thing to do. And um, I draw strength from you. I, I think you're super brave and I appreciate you and everything you do. Thanks, Heather. I feel <laughs>